Hi, I'm Jess, one of the co-founders here at Our Creator, and today we're going to be working on a project that I'm really, really excited about. I've always been interested in paranormal information and uh, horror stories and just hearing different people's encounters with the paranormal, and so I had an idea that I've been sitting on for a little while now, and I finally got the courage to ask them. So we are about to film with a psychic in the art gallery of Sudbury to possibly connect with the spirit of Catherine Bell. I had never heard of the stories of the hauntings of Catherine Bell until a few years ago, and a friend of mine uh, had a part-time job here, and she said when she came for her interview, they asked her if she was something she felt comfortable with. And she told me after a while she had her first experience where she was alone in the gallery, and she got a call that the third floor balcony door was wide open, and she was here totally by herself. Um, obviously, she was scared, and I was terrified just hearing the story but I could not wait to find out more information. So I finally approached the art gallery and luckily for us, they were so excited to do this project. So um, here we go. We're about to go forward with the Psyche of Chantal and try to speak with Catherine, see what she has to say about the gallery today. William and Catherine Bell aren't from here themselves. So while they're known in Sudbury, they're actually from the Ottawa Valley. So he's from Pembroke and she's from Ottawa proper. Uh, they moved around quite a bit, but they settled here in 1986 in the Sudbury area. Uh, they finalized the purchase of 155 acres, which complements both the art, where the art gallery is and really property stretching all the way to near where Science North is and Bell Park itself. Before the Bell Manor was here, there used to be this old recluse uh, who had this stone rock log uh, house that, and that was known as Deacon's Castle. Uh, and this recluse was possibly a British war vet who, who lived here. The gallery two where we're standing now used to be four bedrooms and a bathroom. Uh, the upstairs was storage and supposing there was a billiards table there and downstairs was the main living space. So there was a living room near where the, the solarium was and there's also the kitchen dining room with a bay window that's still there today. They stayed here till he passed away in 1945 and she passed away in 1940. 54. A fire broke out in December of 1955, gutted out primarily the whole inside except for the down uh, where the solarium is. Parts of that solarium are still tr fr from the traditional home itself. In 1967, it became the Laurentian University uh, Art Gallery and Museum, and then henceforth we became the Art Gallery of Sudbury itself. Catherine Bell herself uh, was known primarily for her love of animals. It has been known that she didn't like children per se, but she was also known for volunteering quite a bit with YMCA, Children's Aid, she's helped with the Salvation Army and quite a bit. They were both very well known for philanthropists. Bell Park that we know of today and that we use uh, was actually donated by Bell himself and he also donated or with, took part in Memorial Park or the creation of Memorial Park itself. I was new to Sudbury, very new to Sudbury when I started. So um, as soon as I began, I was sort of uh, inundated with all of the, this lore of the Bell Mansion. And um, I, didn't, I hadn't quite figured out how I felt about it. But early on, I'd say maybe the second week being here, I was setting up for a school group to come in and um, in the adjacent room to where I was, I heard a very distinct sound of a table being dragged across the room. So I poked my head in to see who was taking one of my tables and no one was there. And I hadn't quite thought much about it because I was so busy, but it was definitely peculiar. Um, and there have been other experiences in that studio um, where people have heard um, knocking noises coming from the other side of the slanted ceilings that we have there. And uh, my manager, Nancy, um, said one day she decided to knock back just to see what happened. And there was a responding knock. So I think at that point she was sort of done and sort of left the room <laughs> because she was a little freaked out. Um, but there are a lot of stories, specifically in that area, I don't quite know why, about doors shutting on their own. Um, you know, but it's an old building, so there are a lot of sounds and creaks and things, but then there are some things that are harder to explain, like a table being dragged across the room. The biggest story that I had, and I mean, it's, um, so one night, usually when we have openings at the art gallery at the very end, I'll be the one to close up and make sure everything's closed, all the lights are shut, especially. 
So everyone was pretty much gone. There might have been a few more people in gallery one, but I headed upstairs to the third floor to make sure all the lights were off and the door was locked. So as I was going up, um, I noticed that, or I've heard, I heard footsteps behind me and I, it, it was very distinct footsteps. Like I hear creaking in the stairs. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat skeptical about the ghost. I don't assume automatically that it is the ghost, but these were quite different and it, it was very close. So as a joke and partially probably out of fear, really, uh, I asked, is that you, Catherine? And then nothing came out of it. So I unlocked the door and then upon putting the light on, the light bulb blew. Uh, so everything went dark and then I rushed downstairs and I remember thinking, if I hear those footsteps behind me, <laughs> I might die right here. <laughs> So Chantal, I'm so excited that you came and joined us today at the gallery. Um, I heard when you came in today that you felt like Catherine had already been with you and was giving you a few messages about her visit today. Yes, she did visit me last night. Um, I did feel her presence in the middle of the night. Um, and uh, the message was to um, be fasting or um, not to have um, a full stomach today, to be fasting for what I would be trying to do. Um, and it it came across as um, the energy was negative around that. Um, and for me, it seems to relate to before her passing. Okay, so she wanted to prepare you for it. Mm -hmm. um, well, with that being said, I guess let's just launch right in to see what Catherine has to say to us tonight. And she, she's coming across as telling me that um, her, her childhood would have been very difficult. Um, the era she would have grew up in um, would have been a really tough time. Um, and it, and it's coming across also that there's a female negative energy around her um, in her childhood. So that could have been her mother. She's reflecting on the time uh, when she would have been um, happier. Um, would have probably been uh, when she would have met uh, her husband. And that she's indicating to me that um, they worked together um, as far as um, like being pillars in the community, or they were involved in a lot of things. Uh, but in particularly, her energy comes across um, over in, in the room there, which I um, am going to get up and go feel her energy there. It's coming across, uh, she's telling me that she would have been very well known in this community and um, remembered. But for whatever reason in her lifetime, she felt alone. She's coming across as telling me, even though there was a lot of like accomplishments, um, there was a sense of feeling, sense of solitude, mm -hmm. sense of, solitude of, of not being understood. Now this room here is actually, she's, she's communicating to me about her husband. And I think that solitude feeling definitely increased um, because she's telling me that he, he passed away before she did. It's also coming across that her um, passing would not have been an easy one. She's telling me that her passing, her passing was not easy. Um, and um, the energy is still very much, um, to me, it, it's feeling like in the present. And she's indicating to me that she would have had a really hard time letting go when she crossed over. The, en the energy is coming across as uh, being very much so in the structure, in the building. The reason she's, she's kind of still coming around is there's a lot of people here, there's a lot of things that are going on, um, and certain things she, she's, not, she's not happy with. Um, so the energy is coming across as not approving of certain things and primarily um, the children because she um, just was not close to kids. And maybe that's what she's looking for again is to have that recognition because it's coming across that all that she would have done is kind of, um, it's not being validated today she's in the so present. Like so if there was like a um, something Dedic like not dedicated to her, but if there was something that people would see of her um, or there would be something in her memory. Because when people come in here, see, they see the gallery for what it is now. Um, but it, she says, all my hard work is, is not being recognized. She worked really hard in her lifetime. She was a very dedicated um, person to what she believed in with projects and things in the community. Um, so her advice would be to, to keep that memory of her um, alive and to, 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 build, to build onto it, but to respect that her energy is here. 
We've had a really exciting night here today at the gallery. Uh, Chantal was able to connect with Catherine loud and clear, and Catherine had a lot to say. Um, some of the main takeaways was that Catherine uh, was very involved and very active in her community, and uh, she stays at the gallery because she feels very connected to it. It's her home, and she truly feels like she needs to protect it. Um, as well, she, she wants to be recognized for everything that she did do for her community. She was responsible for so many things that we already that we enjoy in our community. She obviously um, owned the land that we call Bell Park. She donated the the property uh, that we're in right now, the art gallery, to the Memorial Hospital, and then it eventually became the art gallery. So we get to enjoy all this great art in our city. Um, really, thanks to them building their their home here. Um, so Catherine, um, one of the things that she really was hoping is hoping for in the future is to have some sort of a plaque or a monument installed at the gallery. She really, what she really wants to, you to know is uh, you're walking into her home and these are all the great things that she did for our city and she doesn't want to be forgotten. So um, I hope next time you go to the gallery, you take a moment and uh, just think about all the great things that the Bell family did for us in Sudbury. Do you want to take some too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't know how this works. Okay, so your listening? left hand? Yeah, sure. Okay. Left hand. I don't really know how this works either. I'm, I'm winging it. <laughs> you have too much. She has this really little. <laughs> okay, so left hand to your heart. Say a little prayer to thank, thank the Creator for um, blessing us with the earth. <laughs> Um, and thank Catherine for participating. So thank you Catherine so much tonight for giving us a great experience and for participating in us talking to you. And then you have to let it go. <laughs>